Caged by Helena Phillips. Her eyes opened to the glare outside the parameters of the gazebo protecting her exposed limbs, which, naked and thin, were a pallid shade of vulnerability. In the fierce heat, she battled against the 39 degrees of entropy, threatening to devour her enthusiasm. Slight breezes lifted her loose lawn shift, flapping the florals against the wrist propping up her iPad. In its sweaty circle, pale pink extended from rose into strong red paint. Words seemed scarce this afternoon. If Luca's arrival followed its usual course, she still had a couple of hours in which to recover her threads and meet today's quota of 2,000 words, perhaps even 2,500 to give her some leeway. Writing to somebody else's agenda was difficult, but it helped to support this lifestyle which in midsummer had so far been idyllic. Sleep was overrated and the morning's interruptions tolerable only if they gained her freedom in the middle of every day. Fumbling at the cap of her drink bottle, she raised it to her lips, gulping the coldness and clarity of crystal water and thanking the creator of insulated containers, as she did regularly. Two paragraphs later, she heard, with a tinge of frustration, the skid of car tyres on her driveway as Luca's ute, with the too light rear end, headed towards her. This sound triggered apprehension, flooding the peaceful space inside her head, where creating words with meaning had been supreme. What state could he be in today? Would she wish the visit over before it had begun, just by searching his face for signs? Ten minutes later, when he still hadn't opened his car door, a flash of irritation replaced the fear. Luca's preoccupation with his phone could ruin any affection she felt towards him before they had even exchanged greetings. Two more paragraphs appeared before he headed towards her. Probably rubbish, but it had kept her occupied, and after a moment's hesitation, she saved the work. Hey, beautiful! The words and the smile suggested a pleasant afternoon yet. He dropped his arm across her shoulder, feather light, making her feel like a piece of porcelain. Sorry, Charlie, that batshit landlord is after me again. The cheerful grin was disarming, and there was no help for it but to flash a smile back at him when when she really wanted was to begin the lecture that went nowhere. He dragged over a low flat table and sat on it, both their knees touching. How'd you sleep? Did Anna make you happy from this morning? Tell me the next exciting episode. Anna was Charlie's carer. Coming from a large Sudanese family, which were part of a much larger community of migrants, she always had drama going and regularly regaled her client whilst emptying her bag and sponging her down. Once a week they tackled a shower together, but not more often because the whole rigmarole exhausted her. In order to create the requisite thousands of words, she needed to be up and about. Without waiting for the answer, Luca switched subjects. How's the article going? Genuine interest flashed across his face to be replaced in a line of thoughts like a row of skydiving gnats. Can I get you anything? Have you got any food? What needs to be done? Charlie's shoulders hunched towards her ears, dropping back into the resigned but braced position of hands-on iPad for protection. Her answer was more than a little bit impatient. For God's sake, Luca, slow down. He turned his head away at the tone, jumping at his feet and heading for the front door. Just grabbing a drink, he called back. Can I get you something? As the front door slammed, tears slid down her cheeks and she left them alone, knowing they'd be gone by the time he returned. It took 15 minutes. Luca, can you drag me up a little bit, please? I'm getting uncomfortable. How do you deal with that when no one's around? From over the back of her wheelchair, his strong arms lifted her hips, rearranging them before smoothing her dress straight. He had talents. I put up with it until I go in for a rest, but I like to use you when I can. It stops you from annoying me too much. His grin dimmed. What have you been up to this week? Ah, just hanging out with friends, trying to pick up some work here and there, sleeping a lot. There was something about his openness which made him lovable. Why don't you take on a few clients regularly? It would make things easier, he stared at her. You know why I don't do that. I can't. Stop nagging me about it. I like my freedom to do what I need to do without being questioned. What do you need to do, Luca? Because you don't need to be here all the time. I've told you that. And I've told you I come because I love you. 
Charlie stared back at the irritated face in front of her. I'm scared you come because you feel guilty. I wish you would let that go. I'm scared you take drugs to get rid of the guilt. Well, they're not working. You're just messing up with your life as well as... She stopped, shocked at herself with what she'd about to say. So far, holding it all back had been easier. His head had fallen forward, sheltering his eyes from her. I've asked you so many times to drop the guilt, Luca. I sometimes feel like I'm the cause of your addictions, and I can't stand the thought of that. You were driving too fast. I accept that. But I've moved on, and my life is working for me now, except when I have to watch yours collapsing further every day. So you're saying I'd rather... I mean, I mean, you're saying you'd rather that I didn't come? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying one of us has moved on from the accident and the other hasn't. The silence descended in that awful way it had of freezing the two of them into miserable, unproductive, purposeless traps. These regularly failed to resolve what to say next, let alone move the situation forward, wherever that was. Towards liberty, maybe? She focused on not holding her breath while taking herself through whether to touch him or whether that would make everything worse, if that had been possible. Luca, you can't live like this. You just can't do it to yourself. His head snapped up as his rage showered her with venom. Why not? Why not, Charlie? You do. You have to live with this every day for the rest of your life. You used to be able to dance. You had plans for travel. You used to love to cook, have visitors for dinner parties, garden, swim, ride a bike. Now, now you're trapped in that thing, unable to do anything for yourself forever. He jumped to his feet in the middle of all of this and was currently pacing restlessly in front of her as the meth overtook him. I just can't bear all this. It's too much for me. I hate my life. I want my freedom back. He was sobbing now, unaware of her presence or her feelings or anything he was saying. I can't live like this. The shouting was beginning to frighten her and for the first time she felt in danger with him, alone like this. I can't help you then, she said softly, more to herself than anyone else. The sun had moved away from them, hiding itself behind afternoon clouds as the tiniest of breezes fluttered across her hot face. Sticky under her clothes, the breeze blew her short dress, bringing sensations of pleasure, and her breath slowed while she searched him for clues or answers that might make a difference to him this one time. I still have my freedom while you seem to have lost yours. He stared at her blankly, unable to comprehend what she was saying. He considered running, but remembered his commitment to her to never stop trying to make her life easier. And if he ran, he wouldn't return. Of that he was certain. I have plans, you know, she said, staring into the garden, her thoughts far away. I'm young and free of commitments, And I'm going to learn to swim again. And I'm definitely travelling once this COVID-19 thing clears and I finish this project I'm working on. Every day I choose what I want to do. And when the day is over, I lie awake and make timetables for myself. Hard work ahead, I know, but life is good. For one thing, I've never had so much money before. She glanced at him, grinning briefly. That car that hit us did me that one favour anyway. Charlie pulled her gaze from the trees, fixing him with her determination to reach him. What are your plans, Luca? His face had cleared of anger, and what she saw in it now was despair and hopelessness. He needed her and her willingness to pretend she was broken. But the cost of that pretense weighed her down with anxiety for his future, Sensing the heaviness, Luca flashed his flawless smile and said, You give me hope, Charlie. Coming here gives me hope. He bent to kiss the top of her head. Don't send me away. I dedicate this story to two inspiring people. Senior Australian of the Year, ACT, Susan Salthouse. Decades ago, Susan suffered a horse riding accident, leaving her a paraplegic. She travels the world, often alone, advocating for people with disabilities and brushing aside those who would do for her things she is quite capable of doing herself. The other is Zach, whom I met only once on the Gold Coast. Zach has multiple disabilities, speech, eyesight, mobility. 
he was sitting in a small crowd gathered around Slim Pickens, who was singing his favourite song for him. Zach's eyes were alight as he attempted to belt out the vocals. Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way.